Okay, let's look now at the inductive uh, approach. Again, you need to have a set of research objectives or, or just an objective uh, and a set of or just one research question. This, um, in, in this example, let's say um, the primary goal is to find out why an individual elected to enrol on a marketing degree at Leeds Beckett University. Now, unlike the deductive approach, the uh, research objective or the search question uh, will now not include the theoretical framework. So it makes sense there. So where do we begin if we don't have a framework to start to think of the questions that we want to use? One of the ways uh, that I approach this dilemma is to start thinking of my own categories. Um, and I could do this either by myself or in a brainstorming session with some colleagues or some, uh, some friends or whatever to try and get an idea of um, how I'm going to um, approach the research. Bear in mind the, uh, the specific time frame that you've got, 30 minutes, so you want um, X number of questions or 45 minutes, X number of questions. Now, in, in, what, what's happening here, however, is that because you are building up the, your own categories, you're actually adopting what's known as a, a constructivist approach um, because the questioning is going to be influenced by your own thinking or the thinking if you use the, um, uh, a focus group or uh, a brainstorming session of, of others around how the, um, the question should be a, a, a approached. Now when I talk about um, doing thematic analysis with photo elicitation or image elicitation, um, we'll see that um, we can move away from uh, having this constructivist uh, element by not having any input into the questioning process whatsoever or very limited. But let's accept that the constructive approach, i.e. using some of your knowledge to develop the questions, is the way forward. So uh, I've now developed um, six categories uh, where I want to expand on, which will give me an idea as to, uh, or give me uh, an answer to my research objective stroke question. Now the categories are uh, awareness, location, university, degree, cost and offer. And part of this is based around because I want to find out why they chose to join the university so I can develop a new marketing program to help attract more individuals to that. Um, that's the, one of the reasons why I looked into this. Now, let's say you um, were doing a brainstorming session and you ended up with um, 15 or 20 categories. You're going to have to prioritize those and cut them out because um, six, um, six to eight could be pushing it a bit. Uh, you, you know, 20 will be too many to ask for, bearing in mind that um, you want to supplement each question with two or three further questions. This is just going to take forever to do, uh, not in terms of the interview process, but also the transcribing. So what would we ask then for awareness? So awareness could be something like, um, what did you know about Leeds Beckett uh, before joining the programme? Uh, they'll give you the answer and then you can um, get some more information about it. Uh, location. What did you know about Leeds bef uh, as a city before uh, joining the programme? Uh, and again, if it's an individual from a different university, you're still asking a valid question. You know, they, they may say, right, I know lots about Leeds and I really hate it. And that's one of the reasons why I haven't come here. Uh, the question about the university, very similar to the location. Uh, what is it about the university that you like, stroke, do not like? Uh, and then you can get some uh, information about this. And it doesn't matter that the individual is at a different university. They may like Leeds Beckett as a university, but find that uh, they went to a different one because their grades weren't high enough. Degree, uh, that's my, my fourth question. Uh, and it could be something like, um, what was it about the degree that you liked or did not like? So I'm, I'm using the same sort of um, questioning for the university for, uh, as I've used for the degree. Uh, my fifth question would be around costs. Um, did the costs of the degree uh, have an influence on your decision? Um, and although most people think, um, yeah, everyone pays the same cost these days in the UK in terms of the degree, the location might bear uh, a little bit uh, about that. So uh, 
uh, embarking on in the green London will be uh, a lot more expensive than one that's um, done in the north, say. Uh, and then the final question would be something to do with an offer. Uh, and the question could be something like, did you get an unconditional offer from Leeds Beckett University? And again, it doesn't matter if they've gone to a different university because we all want to try and find out why they chose not to, to accept. As before, um, I mentioned uh, you should supplement each question with a further two or three uh, questions based on what they, they answered. The underlying factor, however, uh, in the question in design must be that it addresses the main objective. I've, um, uh, particularly at the undergraduate level, seen students um, set a set of uh, objectives and then uh, they'll create a load of questions that pay base no relation to the objectives that they're looking to achieve so do be do be careful of that so uh, i hope that helps uh in understanding this process of developing um questions for the semi-structured interview approach the next time um uh, uh, i produce the video i'll do one on a similar subject but looking at the concept of um, photo elicitation or um, developing images uh, as a means of ans ans asking the questions. Now, I've written uh, all this up as a blog, so there's a checklist in there that you can download, uh, and the link is at the bottom uh, of uh, um, the, the, the screen, sort of in the description area, so you can uh, go to it from there. Um, uh, if, if you enjoyed this, uh, please like and subscribe, or if you've got any questions or videos that you'd like me to, uh, to focus on, then, then drop me a, a line and I'll uh, try and um, do my best in producing one for you. Thanks again and uh, I'll speak to you again soon.